What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to Diligent Canine again. Uh, I want to do a video about containment systems and drive. And it's not what you think. I don't mean drive capping or drive channeling. That's something completely different. What I mean is how your containment system, that is the container, uh, kennels, crates, etc., that you keep your dog in affect their drive and motivation and overall energy levels. And this is my observation. My observation is that as that space, uh, or rather the environment that you allow that energy to expand in, their drive and energy, um, so again, not necessarily like their motivation, although that may be true as well, the physical energy and enthusiasm and excitement in your dog increases. So what I mean by this is keeping your dog in a smaller area, I know this is gonna sound counterintuitive, but keeping the dog more contained in a smaller environment like a crate, over time decreases the dog's overall energy level. And on the other hand, allowing them to be free, or more free, say, um, you know, if we're carry, uh, comparing like a 42 inch crate, wire crate or something like that, to like a 10 by 10 kennel to a quarter acre backyard, maybe even an eighth of an acre fenced in backyard where they get to run, jump, play, execute, and reinforce their natural drives, that increases the dog's overall energy level. And um, again, I haven't studied this in a lab, it's just been my observation that when I've had rainy days, you know, here in Georgia, in the winter and spring, sometimes it rains for three, four, five days straight. No joke. Um, and until recently, that's meant I have had to keep my dog in a crate while I'm at work. It sucks. Um, I'll admit that's, that's my bad, and I don't think it's the right thing or the fair thing to do for your dog, but it's what I've had to do to make it through those situations. Um, just a quick side tangent. Um, I, the reason for that is I had had an outdoor kennel and I was having some issues. Um, this mongrel in the back here um, chewing through the roofs, the tarp roofs, tearing holes in them. And of course he would get wet and uh, it hasn't warmed up until recently. So obviously we have some hypothermia issues or concerns and things like that that I want to avoid. So in, in my case, I decided the containment was worth um, I, the, the risk of the containment outweighed the risk of hypothermia. So, um, sticking on topic then, the containment system is matter. So when I've had to have my dog in a crate, now eventually he'll go stir crazy um, and really want to work. But I'm not talking about days at a time here, although that could happen. I talk about like months at a time. So when I've had to keep my dog you know, whether my work schedule is just crazy for a while, and I've had to have my dog in a crate for a long time, his drive and desire to work, to play, just in his overall enthusiasm and personality seems to be more blunted. I've also noticed the opposite to be true. The more space I give my dog, so when I move from the 42 inch crate to his daily containment being um, a four by eight, kennel, um, I notice a huge, huge improvement in his energy level. When I let him out of the kennel, zoomies all over the yard, all over the yard. He was jumping, um, he was excited. Not that he wasn't excited to get out of his crate when we were using the crate primarily, but overall, it, it created a suppressing effect is what I'm getting at. I noticed the same thing again when I went from uh, the four the four by eight kennel that I had set up to uh, the containment system I created in my it's now my garage slash kennel. Um, it's probably eight eight or ten feet by maybe fifteen feet or so. Okay, so uh, from four by eight to we'll call it eight by 16, roughly double the space. Um, I wouldn't say that I, I saw a, a dub, double or a 100% increase in my dog's energy, but man, he is off the chain. 
literally, pun intended. Um, when I open that kennel door, I pull up into the driveway and I open that kennel door, and he can see me, man, it is non-stop. He is hurtling, jumping, I mean, the, the increase in energy level is beyond words. So, obviously, if you're working a dog, uh, if you have a sport dog, or you just you're just looking for the best time to train your dog when they have the most energy or the most enthusiasm to work, um, it's going to be probably when they're hungry and after they've been cooped up for a while. But again, the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that how cooped up they are um, matters, and it actually seems to be kind of the opposite effect. So the more balled up I keep my dog, that doesn't mean he's like ready to explode. It's the opposite. The more, the more contained I keep the dog, the less energy he has, um, and the more space I give him to exercise and reinforce those natural drives and his ten natural tendencies to be active, to jump and chase and play, um, the more he wants to do those things, which is, you know, the kind of crazy behave, the kind of crazy drive that I want him to have when we're working and things. So, um, I'm not sure how that would translate to the professional side, but as far as pets and sport dogs go, I, I think it's a really cool observation and something I'm definitely going to have to play with in the future as far as how I can manipulate and make the best opportunity of when um, my dog really wants to work. So, stay tuned, and until next time, train hard, train smart, train safe, guys.